do, do, do. Hey, um, thank you for watching. It's uh, you might have seen some of our recent uh, videos about AMD Ryzen Power ThinkPads. We've uploaded a few. We hope that you find it uh, useful. We know that some of you will be coming from the T470 and the T480 laptops. It's actually not that long ago. So they're incredibly compelling still. So this is just a quick hands-on next to each other. There's no performance stuff. So it's um, if you were expecting that, um, you can probably find those online. Anyway, we hope you find this useful. Let's get on. The T14 is a more compact chassis from the front. You can see this. Also, the bezel struts lower. We align them by this point at the back. The bezel ends lower as well. The webcam availability is a little bit more consistent. Whereas on Windows Hello version, there's no PC shutter. There is going to be more screen options on the newer version. This is the 400 nits low power option. That's a standard 250. These are the same wallpaper I have checked. If we look closely, you will see that there's upwards firing speaker now. Over time, there will probably be some dust accumulating in there, but I think that's inevitable. It's very nice to have upwards firing speaker. Whereas on the T480, the speaker is downwards firing. On both models, you would ideally want to switch on the Adobe software to make the most of the internal speakers. I would describe the speakers on either laptop as functional. They are okay for business calls. For anything more advanced, we would suggest using headphones or something similar. They don't quite compare to the latest and greatest entertainment laptops, but they're functional. Between these two excellent keyboard, I would probably say the T480 has just a little bit more edge. It has more generous travel. The feedback is quite predictable. Also, the keyboard click is quite understated. Whereas the newer T14, they've got... A little bit more clicky, audible clicking noise. I don't know if that will go away over time. Personally, this track point button on the old one is more satisfying to click. The travel on the new one is a little bit thinner and is more noisy. Old click button. New one is a little bit more subdued, but you have a little bit more noise coming from along the palm rise. The overall trackpad size seems to be very similar between these two. They've not made it larger. Conversely speaking, the chassis has got smaller. And of course, um, lid opening on either model is impractical with one hand. That's probably a feature for them to take away and work on. This is just aimed at showing you the heat signature of both laptops with the Ryzen 7 on the front, i5 at the back. Not like for like, so we just want to show you where the heat goes. Um, don't compare the heat because that's not representative. So on the Ryzen model, loads of the heat goes to the right. Understandable because that's where the heat vent is, as you can see. There's some heat at the center and some heat at the back. Whereas on the T480, the heat travels from close to here, as you can see. So it's opposite direction in terms of the heat. They heat up a little bit differently. On the newer T14, it will be around the heatsink. And if you have a second RAM stick, it will be somewhere around here. That's also a little bit warm. The heat on the T480 is placed a little bit differently. They would appear on the other direction because of the fan placement. And obviously, just to say, these temperatures are from running Cinebench, so it's not going to be reflective of the everyday temperature, which would be much, much cooler. The power bridge battery was very popular with some of the T480 users. What it allowed you to do was have an internal battery of 24 watts hour. Additionally, have up to 72 watts hour swappable battery. So essentially, your capacity could go to 96 watts hour, depending on your battery configuration overall. But that's a little bit bigger when maxed out than the 50 watts hour on the newer T14. Of course, on the newer T14, it supports faster charging. External USB-C charger, that could be an alternative. Nonetheless, some users will really miss the T480's very functional dual battery design. The T480's ports were quite focused on the right-hand side. So on the left, you have just the charging port. Thunderbolt 3 and docking function, as well as the smart card reader over there. What is quite noticeable is the fan exhaust is on the left hand side. On the new T14 on top, the overall number of ports remain largely the same, except perhaps a little bit better spread out. As you can see, USB port on the left, HDMI, audio jack, and micro SD card reader. And of course, the current trend of the AMD Ryzen laptop is no Thunderbolt. The T480 on the base 
Mix up the lap of ports on the left hand side with more on the right hand side. As you can see, the audio jack, USB, HDMI, and a full size SD card reader. Personally, I'd always prefer an external card reader over an internal one for the simple reason the contact points may wear out eventually. But given the chance, a full size SD card reader is always preferable, but it seems most manufacturers are not going that way. The T14 on the top has a right handed fan exhaust. There will be some heat there. At least it's towards the back of the system rather than the front. I suppose one tip would be to use wireless mouse and keep your hands a little bit further away. This is not to say the old T480 implementation was much better, because if you fully maximize all the ports on the T480 on the bottom, then you'll find loose of cable coming out close to your hands, especially if you're right-handed. The two units have very similar design language at the back. The T14's SIMS card tray could be ejected quite easily if you have the right tool whereas you would have to remove the battery on the older T480 to access the SIMS card. The T14's thinness is a little bit more apparent from the front. Additionally, it's also less wide. In our recent T14, T14S video, we've already gone into what the T14 will be like to use, and what kind of things you can upgrade, so we won't go into it. What's quite unique about the 480 is that it has two RAM slots still, so it could go up to 64 gigabyte instead of 48 on the newer one. If you do want more RAM, the L series L14 G1 will have a two RAM slots which are upgradable. L it used to be old R series, a little bit above the E series in terms of position. Personally, I would argue that this specification is still decent enough for the everyday office 500 gigabyte SSD and AC Wi-Fi, and this is perfectly competent for the day-to-day -day deployment. It's just I think that the T14 is more powerful and lets you do some of the stuff that previously with Intel it might have taken longer time to do. On the T14, regardless of what process you pick, it seems it's got the single-threaded stuff covered. Intel does fairly well here, and Intel is also known to do fairly well for optimizing the battery when your workload is quite light. We're still finding out if AMD can quite match Intel's optimization here. More reviews will pop up online. More definitively, the multi-threaded performance seems to be where the AMD some stronghold is. If you're more of power user, for instance, do lots of database and encoding, rendering, etc., then you'll definitely find some value. Let's not forget that with the rise of the power usage under heavy workload is definitely improved. Thunderbolt 3 is probably among the only conspicuous feature that's missing. Obviously, we hope that this is resolved in the future, but as soon as it has Thunderbolt, it's going to be a lot more appealing for the people who have specific docking needs. It's also a little bit different if you're paying for it yourself, where you're wanting that value for money, versus if you're deploying it in mass. The case is, if you're deploying systems, then you might be a little bit more cautiously optimistic about Ryzen. You might wait another six months, a year, until you start deploying it, because I think with newer platforms, there's usually some teething issues you'd rather somebody else find out rather than on your live deployment. Also keep in mind, after years and years of uh, Intel marketing, it's going to be a little bit challenging for some users suddenly finding out that their next work laptop is AMD. Um, even though it might be really compelling, I think it takes a little bit time to adjust. So <laughs> what has been quite compelling for me is that this is an X13. We're not covering it here, but it's a 13.3 inch laptop, but it gives you performance that you're more used to seeing in a 15.6. So that's two form factors larger, so 14, 15.6. It's just impressive. I think more broadly speaking, when the OEMs are designing their next chassis, it's going to be um, <laughs> intriguing to see how they react to this. For some OEMs, I suspect it would be a proper reset button and for them to start asking the non-conventional questions, for instance, um, does a laptop really need to reach 90 degrees in Chrome, etc. Um, anyway, let's not touch that. But I think, <laughs> more broadly speaking, this is not poking at Intel, more broadly speaking, how can we get our laptop's battery to, let's say, 20 hours, 30 hours? How do we meaningfully do that? I think that would be the really interesting one because I think Intel is not necessarily the focus here. It's more the when the ARM chips start to appear, that's when I think the PC side would see a lot more disruption. Some manufacturers would use this opportunity to make some of the product really compelling. So for instance, a really thin and light, you suddenly can have more power. The business intro range to mid range, you can suddenly have more power as well. We've not seen the higher end stack being given by the AMD or manufacturers just yet, but I suspect when those higher end workstation Ryzen Pro line comes out, those will be um, the thing to watch for. 
Anyway, it's going to be really interesting. If you do upgrade to the T14, T14S or any of the newer AMD ThinkPad, just let us know where you're coming from, which machine you're upgrading from. Definitely interested in finding out. Anyway, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.